Hello, Math 8 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 5, Lesson 2, which is about solving systems of linear equations. This time we're going to use the substitution method. Please have out your spiral notebooks open to a nice clean page and write this at the top of the page. You will also need your RPJs open to page 108 today. In lesson 5.1, we learned how to solve linear equations using the graphing method, but sometimes the graphing method is not very useful, and so it's important that you know a different method to solve systems as well. Today we're going to do the substitution method. There are three steps that we need in order to solve using substitution. The first step is to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. It does not matter which equation you use or which variable you solve for. So if you look at this example over here, we have x plus 2y equals negative 9 and 2x minus y is equal to negative 13. So if I wanted to get one of these variables by itself, this is the only variable that would be the easiest to get by itself. The reason this is the easiest is because there's not a number in front of it, and it's also not negative. This would also be easy, but it's a negative in front of it, so we're not going to use that one. We're going to go ahead and solve this first equation for the x. So here's how we're going to do that. I need to get the x by itself, which means I'm going to subtract the 2y from both sides. So that means that my new equation, that top equation, is now just x equals negative 9 minus 2y. Notice that the plus 2y and the minus 2y turned to 0, and all I'm left with is the x. And notice that these two cannot be combined because they are not like terms, so we keep them separate. So now we have this first equation that we have rearranged, and then we still have the second equation that we haven't done anything with. So I'm just going to rewrite it. 2x minus y is equal to negative 13. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to step two. Step two is to substitute the expression that we just found from step one into the other equation, and then we're going to solve it. And that'll give us half of the answer that we need. So we solved for x, so we're going to take this piece here. Since it's what x equals, we're going to substitute it into the x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that second equation, but instead of x, I'm going to write a parentheses because I need to substitute it in. So notice that 2, this is our x. Instead of x, we wrote parentheses minus y, so minus y, equals, equals, negative 13, negative 13. Notice that this is exactly the same equation as this one. The only difference is that we did parentheses instead of the x. And the reason why we did that is because we need to substitute. This is why this is called substitution. So we're going to take this piece and put it in to that x. So I'm going to write negative 9 minus 2y. All right, now we just need to solve it. So uh, my first step to solving is to distribute. I'm also going to put a line down the equal sign here to help me so that I can solve correctly. So uh, let's go ahead and multiply in. So 2 multiplied by negative 9 is negative 18. 2 multiplied by negative 2y is minus 4y. And then the rest of it stays the same, minus y equals negative 13. So now I need to combine like terms. So this one is negative 4y and negative 1y. There's an invisible 1 here. I also need to move over this negative 18 so that it's with the one that doesn't have a y with it. So it's on the other side. And in order to move it over, I'm going to add it to both sides. So add 18, add 18. And now let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So negative 4, negative 1 is negative 5y. And then uh, 18 minus 13 is 5. Now we're going to simplify by solving this continually, continuing to so divide by negative 5. And we get y is equal to negative 1. 
The last step is to substitute the value that we got from step two, which we got y equals negative one, into one of the original equations. So remember way up here is our each original equation. So this one's the, the one that we changed up a little bit, but it, we're gonna go ahead and use that because that one's the easier one to use. So we're gonna solve then for x in this case, because we already know what y is, so we need to solve for x. And then we'll write our answer, and don't forget we need to write it in xy form. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We know our y is equal to negative one. Um, we are given, or we have x is equal to negative nine minus two, and we need to substitute in the y is equal to negative one there. So y is negative one. And if you're wondering where I got this from, negative nine minus two x. I got it from the original equation that we had up here, negative nine minus two y. So instead of y, we put in the negative one because that's what y equals. And now we just need to simplify this. So I have uh, negative nine. Negative two times negative one is plus two. So that equals negative seven. All right, so that means that we know that x is equal to negative seven. Okay, we're ready to write our answer. X is negative seven and Y is negative one. And there we have it. That is our answer for this problem. And as a reminder, if we were to graph these two equations way up here, they would be lines on the graph. And they would intersect at negative seven comma negative one. That's why we need to write this answer like a point because it is the point where those two lines intersect. Please open your RPJs to page 108. I'm gonna start with number two. So I have x here, x is equal to four, negative four y plus 12. You'll notice x is already solved for. So that means when, we, when I talked about the three steps on the previous uh, slide, we don't need to do step one because this is already solved for. So that means what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this since it's equal to x and we're gonna substitute it in for the x on that first equation. So I'm gonna rewrite the first equation, 3 fourths. Instead of x, I'm gonna put parentheses, and then minus 5y is equal to seven. Notice it's exactly the same. This equation here is exactly the same as this, except for I used parentheses instead of x. And in the parentheses, I'm gonna put negative 4y plus 12. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. When I have, uh, any time that I have a, a fraction out front here, I'm just gonna rewrite it this way. So 3 fourths multiplied by negative four, and I'm gonna change it to a fraction. There's a y. And then plus, and I have 3 fourths, because I'm going this one now, 3 fourths multiplied by 12 over one. Uh, and then I, the rest of it stays the same. Minus five y is equal to seven. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify this. Negative four divided by four is negative one on the top and one on the bottom. And then 12 divided by four is three on the top and one on the bottom. So this simplifies two. So we have three times negative one over one. So that's gonna be negative three y. And then here we have three times three. So that's gonna be nine. And then minus five y is equal to seven. Okay, my next step is to combine like terms. So I've got these two that need to be combined. And at the same time, I'm gonna move this plus nine over to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract nine here and here. All right, so when I combine these two terms, negative three and negative five, I get negative eight y. And on the other side, I have negative nine and positive seven. So that's gonna be negative two. All right, so now we need to uh, continue to simplify. So I have negative eight times y, so I'm gonna divide out my negative eight. And now I need to simplify this. So two, oh, negative two over negative eight becomes positive two over eight, and then I'm gonna divide by two here and here. And I end up getting that y is equal to one fourth. All right. So now then I know part of my answer. My y number is positive one fourth. Now I just need to find my x. So let's go ahead and see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take the, the one fourth and we're gonna substitute it into one of these two top equations. 
My suggestion is always use the one that's solved for what you need. We need the x, right? So, and the x is already here. So that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. x is equal to negative 4y plus 12. And I'm going to take this 1 fourth and substitute it in for the y here. So we get x is equal to negative 4 multiplied by 1 fourth and then plus 12. So I'm going to make the negative 4 into a fraction, and these simplify to a 1 on the bottom and a negative 1 on the top. If I continue to simplify, now x is equal to negative 1 plus 12, so that equals 11. So that means 11 is my x, and that goes in the answer box, and there we have our answer. Let's take a look at number 1. Notice we have y already by itself. y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. So once again on this one, we can skip that step 1. So we're going to take y equals negative 2x plus 4 and plug it in here. So that means we're going to get negative x plus 3, and instead of y, I'll put parentheses, equals negative 9. Remember, this equation here is exactly the same as this one, but instead of y, I put parentheses. And I did that because I need to substitute in what y equals from the first equation. So that's negative 2x plus 4. All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and finish the rest of this problem. So your next step is to solve this for x, and then you're going to take whatever you get and plug it back into either of these two equations. I would suggest the top one to see if you can find what y is, and then finish it by writing your answer. So go ahead and pause and finish number one on your own. All right, check your answer. I got three comma negative two. If you did not get three comma negative two, take a look at my work and take a look at your work and see if you can find your mistake and fix your mistake. It's okay if you make a mistake right now, that's part of learning. Let's take a look at number three. On number three, you'll notice that neither equation is solved for one of the variables, which means we do need to do step one. So let's take a look at what we can do. We could either solve for x on the first one or y on the first one, or we could solve for x on the second one or y on the second one. When I look at this, it looks to me that y on the first one would be easier, even though we have a negative in front of the y. So my first step is to move the 5x over to the other side. So what I'm going to do is subtract 5x from both sides. And then what I get is negative y, don't forget there's a negative still in front of the y, equals, and then I'm going to do negative 5x plus 4. Now I still need to get rid of that negative in front of the y. So I'm going to divide out a negative 1, because that's what really this is. It's a negative 1 multiplied by y. And I'm going to divide out a negative 1 here and here. When you divide out something, you have to do it for the whole entire equation. So I'm left with y is equal to positive 5x minus 4. Whenever you divide out a negative number, it's like you're flipping the sign. So a negative turns to positive and a positive turns to negative. Now I have my y by itself. So now I can take this y and substitute it into the other equation for the y. So I'm going to rewrite that second equation, 2x plus 2. And instead of y, I'm going to put parentheses, equals 16. And in the parentheses, I'm going to put what y equals to what we just found, which is 5x minus 4. I would like for you to pause the video, please, and continue solving for x. Then what you're, once you're done, you get x down here. You're going to take that and plug it into this other equation and solve for y and see if you can find the final answer. I got 2 comma 6 as an answer, so please check your work with mine and see if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. Let's take a look at number four. On number four, we do not have a variable solved for on either equation, so that means I need to do step one. I'm going to look for the variable that has the smallest number out front and solve for that. In this case, the smallest number is two. So that's what we're going to go ahead and solve for. So I'm going to circle that x. My first step is to move the three y to the other side. 
And how we're going to do that is subtract 3y on both sides. That's going to leave me with 2x equals negative 3y. Now I still need to solve for x, so I'm going to divide out the 2 on both sides. And I get x is equal to negative 3 over 2y. So now we're going to take what we got for x, which is negative 3 over 2y, and we're going to substitute it in for the x on the other equation. So I'm going to rewrite that second equation, 8, and then I'll put parentheses, plus 9y is equal to 18. And instead of this parentheses here, we're going to substitute in what x is, which is negative 3 over 2y. All right, let's go ahead and solve for y now. So I'm going to rewrite this first part as 8 over 1 multiplied by negative 3 over 2y, and then plus 9y is equal to 18. So to simplify, I notice that I have 8 divided by 2, so that's going to be a 4. Multiplying across, 4 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 12. So we have negative 12y plus 9y is equal to 18. All right, so now we just need to combine like terms. I notice that these two are both like terms. Negative 12 and 9 is negative 3. So we have negative 3y is equal to 18. And now all we need to do is divide out the negative 3 from both sides. And I get that y is equal to negative 6. That means that I know that in my answer, in the y spot, so y is negative 6, so that goes in the y spot here. So I'm going to put negative 6 in that y spot. Okay, so now we're ready to plug in y into, the x, into what x equals here to see if we could solve for x. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2 multiplied by y, which is negative 6 over 1. I'm going to simplify that. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So if we're going to multiply straight across negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, that gives me neg positive 9, excuse me, over, and then we have 1 multiplied by 1, which is 1. 9 divided by 1 is 9. So now I'm able to fill in my x number, and I've got my final answer here. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.